Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. It's your brother JD Nigel. Jeff Deloach, Bible teaching with Jeff Deloach. All right. Um, all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son, the Holy Spirit. I pray you're all doing well. Let me see if I can find my beads. Get these beads on. I don't know. I feel superstitious if I don't. If I don't put my beads, I'm here in Bulls Chica. I'm back in my regular haunts. Um, all praises to the Most High. Hey guys. Don't mind the hair. It's going everywhere. Heavenly Father, bless the message. Bless the ears that hear it. Give us a humble, contrite spirit. Got, got really bright all of a sudden. Is that you, Lord? Is that you, Lord? Is your brightness shining through? We long for your brightness to come shining through. We honor you. We praise you. We believe in you. We believe in your son. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe we're going to be saved. We believe in the promises. We believe in the restoration of Israel. We believe in the redemption of the church. Those who believe on you. We trust. We trust in all these promises. We give ourselves over to you. We trust in you. We lay everything at your feet because you are our God and we are your children. Amen. So, uh, yesterday we went into, um, shoot, I don't know if to, whether to put on my shades or not. I'm, my eyes, I could probably do this. I can still see. Don't mind. I don't. My eyes have been really sensitive. I don't know if I'm getting sick, getting old. I know I'm getting old, but... Seems like once you hit your 60s, you can almost feel things changing in your body. It's like... I guess, it, I guess it's always been that way, but... Man, lately... So yesterday, we went into, um, where were we? We are in Corinthians. We were talking about being an apostle, being a, being a believer, being a, a disciple. And um, it's hard to get going on this disciple thing because there's a lot of questions about who has the right to speak who has the right to teach who has the right to who has the authority here that's right that's what's that's what's really been bothering me lately is who has the right to speak for God who really has the right to speak about this Jesus Christ of ours, this brother of ours that has done everything for us. How, how, how do we even talk about it without being so far from what he really wants us to say? What he really, I mean, 
he's on a level up here of love that we don't understand. How do we speak to each other about this love? How do we do it? So, that whole thing with Paul trying to explain to the Corinthians, um, I, I've been given more than you, but don't think that it's an easy thing. I've been given things to give to you, but don't think that it's easy for you to accept. Um, I've been given beautiful things that make me feel wonderful, and I've been given beautiful things that hurt me, Paul says to the Corinthians. Please don't, please know that I'm not here to hurt you, he tells the Corinthians. What can I do for you? I wish I could just make you understand, you know, so those messages were really hard because I can feel that. I can feel that in my spirit. It's like, You people are so important to me. And we know that there's this weird energy working against us. This gang stalking antichrist energy that's everywhere. And it's so oppressive and depressive and confusing and, and bold and brash and arrogant and confounding and, and deceptive, you know. And so, um, I don't want to be the downer dude, you know, but what seems to me is the quote chosen ones, the ones that are getting these downloads, these seals are opening where, I mean, Every time I bring up some some of this stuff, I have all these triggers from people saying things that aren't true about the seals, about rapture, about the kingdom, about God's name, about I've I've heard so much nonsense now it's hard to It's hard to get a clear picture on some of this stuff because it's these people have so put things in this soup that aren't supposed to be there and it just it doesn't taste right it's like man i wish i could just take all that fucking extra bullshit that they put in the soup and and start fresh where it's like okay back to the base let's put a little of this little of this and make a soup that's really edible and 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 tasty and and nutritional for our spirits, you know, it's, I just spilt coffee on my Bible, so, anyhow, um, I hope you guys got something out of that message, it was difficult, that was a, that was a difficult message to understand because Paul you know for everything people say about Paul you know he's hard to understand he's he's a Benjamite man he's got he's been twisted up in ways that the average believer can't even put a finger on but anyhow that being said I, I say it all the time I'm I'm not your average Bible teacher um I've dabbled in the world. I've I've got caught up in conspiracy theories and I sort of can see what's going on with the propaganda and how the media works against us and how it's always talking about something. It's always telling you something. And there's so much glut of information and it's so often 
contradictory and says one thing on the left hand and another on the right hand and it's literally come to the point where I, I don't see anything that, that is saying anything that really matters anymore. It's like, okay, so the economy's crashing. We're gonna, they're gonna try and put a chip in us. That's a bitch. That's coming so slowly. It's like, can these fuckers just hurry up and slam us and get it over with? It's like the waiting, the, the torturous waiting, the, the constant prodding. We're getting wore down. The Bible says in the last days, the saints will be worn down. The devil and Satan are just, it's, it's not that he's working against us per se he knows he knows a lot of us are covered and so it kind of pisses him off that he can't get to us directly so what is what he does is the same thing that um Balaam did to the children of Israel instead of getting them to he couldn't curse them himself so he got them to curse themselves and so what we see out here is a lot of while we're looking, we're coming across things that are dirty, nasty, scary, um, hurtful. And I'm wondering how we protect ourselves from the, from the world at this point. It's, it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing to protect yourself because we can't unsee things, we can't unhear things, we can't we can't live in a fucking cave. We can't go to the mountaintop and stay there. We need food, we need friendship, we need we need God. And he's um He's revealing himself so slowly. <sighs> Looks like the ex is stalking me. I don't know. I, I'm not going to worry about that. Anyhow, um, so I opened today to uh, the Acts of the Apostles. There's probably some key stuff in this introduction. It's even marked. For some reason, the page got bent over right there. And so, I think the Lord wants me to talk a little bit about the Acts of the Apostles. Which, in the past... For me, I can't tell if I want this or this. It's like, I don't know, my eyes have been bugging. This is too much. This is not enough. But anyhow, um, the Acts of the Apostles for me has always been, I was always more interested in the Old Testament. For a, for I'm still... I still am, but it seems now that the seals are opening. Also, let me say this, from what I can tell. This is just me talking. J.D. Nyjah, 
just speculating. So I've been talking about how the Bible reads not like a, it's not supposed to be read like a novel from front to back because it's actually not time bound as we think it is. So it's not a beginning, um, it's not like theater, there's a opening act, a, a middle act, and a final act. It is that, but we got to understand it's already all happened. It, to me, it's already all happened, and we're just in time as a revealing, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're here to watch it unfold like witnesses, right? We're witnesses to the unfolding of his rea this reality. And um, some people aren't waking up at all. Some people are going to be stuck. They're going to be stuck until the last time, and then it's going to be a weird slap in the face. And then there's others that are getting slapped right now, like like some of us. We're just we're getting whack whack. We're getting woken up, and it's like, what is it? Who is it? We're, our eyes are like cracking open, and we're seeing some things going. Fuck! I don't know if I want to look. And so we're getting slapped around out of our own desire for this revealing. And so what I was going to say before I get lost is that it seems to me like the Israelites, like myself, the true Israelites, that know all about the Old Testament. I know the family stuff really well because I'm part, I, I am the family. I am Israel. And it seems like for me... The New Testament is opening up to me. I never, I always had a hard time with the red letter. What you, what's Jesus saying? Because these churches were always in the red letter. They were always in the New Testament. They were always trying to teach you how to apply the Bible to your own life so you can live a better life, a happier, joyful life in the Lord. And It didn't really always interest me, interest me because I was going to do what I was going to do. I knew that. I, I that's how I felt. I'm like, you know what? You can you can explain some of these biblical New Testament worldly new agey scenarios to me, but it always seemed like I don't know. I wanted to go back to the Old Testament. I, I want to talk about the, my family. I need to know my family before I can trust you to tell me how to live. I need to know who I am first, right? So what I'm what I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to get through to you, is that I think the church, the church is turning back to the Old Testament because the the church, the Old Testament, is opening up to the church. The Old Testament is opening up to the church and the New Testament is opening up to Israel. And I, if there's anything that I want to make a, a point on about the acts of the apostles and this reason why the Lord brought me to this part of the Bible today is he's telling me Being that I've loved his son long enough and I'm new covenant Israel it's time for me to explain to the church who they are for real for real and through the church I'm going to find out who I'm going to have a clearer picture about who I am as an Israelite. 
that's just that's just what it seems to be to me. It seems to be it seems to be a flip flopping thing where the church is going to realize who Israel is, which is really important because you have a it, you can't really understand Jesus Christ until you understand his Juda, Judaism, his family line, his what what does it mean to be him? What does it mean to be Israel? So, let me see what I got. Oh, man. So, this is this is a lot of reading. Hmm. I'm just going to go over here and talk about this part. Finally, Luke wrote, so... Supposedly, Luke wrote the Acts. Um, we'll just go with that. I don't. Who wrote it to me isn't all that important. But anyway, let let me get this so we can kind of understand what I'm saying. Because I have a feeling there's going to be some answers. The Lord does this for us all the time. You see it. I I pontificate on something, and I suggest something, and then. When we look into it, there's there's evidences that these things are are true. Um, and then I'll come back. I'm, I don't know how much I'm gonna do. I I have some stuff to do today. I'm getting out of town. My laundry, the ex went and put the laundry in the laundromat and then took off. And so I I'm nervous because my laundry's over there sitting in the dryer. I, these are the kind kind of types of shit I don't need. That's why I'm just not excited about getting with someone again. It's just anyway. Let me let me read this third, first, second, third. Luke concentrates on the several years involved in the beginning of the church among the Jews, the Samaritans, and the Gentiles. So the Jews, the Samaritans, and the Gentiles—three different people. GMS, you fuckers. Sorry. God darn, I I hate getting mad, but these guys just, they don't want to be honest. They, they're just wicked. A period of virtual silence covering about 10 years follows. Glimpses of these times can be caught in 931, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Um, focuses around the ministry of Paul and so might be designated the Pauline period. Third, Luke wrote to provide a unity between Christ's works in the Gospels and the Apostles' labors after his ascension. <sighs> labor. The difference between labor and work. We're not... There's no works we can do. All we can do is labor. And that's where Tony Baloney is all fucked up in his head. He thinks he, thinks he can do something to help himself. You labor because you labor. I do this because that's what I do. It's not, I'm not asking for anything. I'm not, I'm already saved. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that. You guys know how I feel about that. Um, the apostles labor after his ascension. That which Theophilus experienced in his church in AD 60 was vastly different from all that he read in Luke's gospel. Acts explains these changes. It shows the transition from Christ's message of a coming kingdom to the apostles' message of one new body of Jew and Gentile in Christ called the church. Um, see, that's what I'm trying to explain is that the church, me and the church are finally going to get along. And I think that's why the Lord brought me to this. To the, I'm finally, it's opening up to me. I'm seeing something. I'm having a vision of what it means to be together with these, with these little ones, these new believers, the, the Samaritans and the Gentiles that believe on Christ. I, that's the story, man. GMS, you fucking wicked niggas. Fuckers, man. They won't just... <laughs> they won't just do what's right, man. They just won't do it. 
So this is what's going on. This is what I'm saying. Let me read some more and then I'll come back and we'll we'll look at it again. Um, called the church. Often the experience experiences of Acts reveals a transitional event rather than advocate doctrinal truth. Transitional event. We're transitioning. Israel's transitioning to the church and the church is transitioning to Israel. That's what I'm they're saying exactly how what the Lord's telling me. I can feel it. <coughs> anyway, I'm I don't want to go too much over 25. If you want to read the Bible with me and study for real, subscribe. I love you guys. We're getting more subscribers. People are understanding my message better for some reason. I'm becoming clearer or something. I don't know what's happening. I'm just glad you guys are here putting your heart into understanding where we're really going and not, man, these people are drawing these beautiful murals that are just wrong, wrong, wrong. Anyway, I'll be right back. We'll look in, I'm going to look into this book of Acts a little closer and then um, I'm going to go on vacation for a few days. I'll try and download some videos while I'm in Nevada. I'm out.